Just quickly before I start this video, I just wanted to explain something. So basically in this video, I put some new hair powder on um, and have only just realized now whilst editing it that I didn't comb it through my hair properly. And so it looks like I've got white powder in my hair. Unfortunately, like I filmed this video months ago rather than refilming it, I thought I'd add this bit. So that's why I've got white powder in my hair. It's not mega dandruff, I swear. Right, hello everyone, welcome back to Kate's Comics. Today I'm back with another episode of Five Recent Reads. This is part two, so if you didn't see the first one, it doesn't matter, but if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description and I'll probably put a card up here or something. Um, yeah, so today I'm going to be looking through five stories that I've read recently. I tend to do this um, more in stories than I do books, so we have a couple stories here that are across a couple books. So that's why there's more than five books. Yeah, these are the books I've read in August. So without further ado, I think I'll just get into it, to be honest. So first up, I'm going to go with most recent to uh, the one I read first. So I read this last night. This is Tom King's The Vision Complete Collection. So I unboxed this in one of my recent videos and didn't really know anything about it going in. Um, obviously, I've watched One Division twice now. Um, I'm much, I've said this before, I enjoyed it much more on the binge and yeah, I, I'd heard that it was kind of based on this book a bit and it kind of is, but it's more on the Vision Scholar Witch stuff, um, which is a complete collection I want to get. Now after reading this, I do want to get that. But Tom King's Vision. So Tom King, I hadn't really read his stuff before. I hadn't read his Batman run. Um, I haven't read his other stuff and I really, really enjoyed this book. So. This is 12 issues, and it follows Vision and his family, Virginia, Vin, and Viv, as they live in the suburbs and kind kind of try to achieve like a normal life with them, um, whilst also dealing with everything else that comes along with that. So you have appearances of characters like the Grim Reaper, who I've never seen before. You have mention of like Ultron, um, you get mention of Scarlet Witch and Tommy and Billy. You, you open it up and the first thing that's in this book is the complete collection of Vision and Scarlet Witch. Um, so yeah, I really, <laughs> really want to read that now. But Tom King's writing in this was really... I feel like it would be hit or miss, to be honest. Um, I enjoyed it a lot, but I can see why a lot of people might not enjoy it. Um, maybe that's a concern that some people have on his Batman run. I know some people aren't massive fans of that, but others really are. But yeah, this this um, is kind of off the wall, and I can see why they didn't do this in Division. to be honest with you. There's some stuff that happens that I'm like, how would you even translate that to TV? Um, but other than that, it's really, really enjoyable and yeah, it's crazy, but it kind of gives you a good perspective on the character of Vision and his family and what kind of being normal means to them and to him especially. Um, it reminded me a bit of, I'm trying to think, like maybe Ex Machina uh, or iRobot or something like that. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything because obviously I'm recommending these books, but there's some big kind of mystery stuff that goes on and yeah really enjoyed it i would say this is probably for like not mature readers but teenagers just because there's some animal cruelty in this book and some brief like child abuse i guess um yeah there's a couple bits in this book that are a little bit like disturbing to read um a little bit but not like there's nothing terrible in it or anything like that so yeah that is tom king's vision uh, the complete collection 12 issues so yeah really enjoyed that then we will go on to what i read the night before last which is robert kirkman's die 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 volume one and volume two so volume one we have here collects the first eight issues and volume two collects issues nine to fourteen this is a book well this is a series that is really strange. Um, it, I feel like it. it's different because it kind of walks a really tight line between absurdist and like grounded. So there's some issues in this that are quite grounded and like, yeah, they could make sense or, or something like that. And then there's some issues that are just like really weird. Um, and for me, it didn't really catch that balance between absurdist and grounded. Um, if that makes any sense. If you've read it, you probably know what I'm talking about, but if not, I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, yeah, it's really weird, and going into this, I wasn't really expecting something. Um, I'm trying to trying to talk, see what I talk about without spoiling it. Uh, one minor spoiler that doesn't affect the story is President Barack Obama goes to an alien planet to box some aliens. 
Exactly. Going into that, going into this, I wasn't really expecting that. And then when that kind of happens, I'm kind of like, oh, okay. I was just expecting like a, I don't know, brutal like assassin story, not some intergalactic boxing match between the president and all these aliens. But it was enjoyable for what it was. I enjoyed, I'm trying to think, which did I enjoy more? Uh, maybe the first one. Yeah, maybe the first one a little bit more. But I don't know, it kind of reminded me a bit of a Shirtless Bear Fighter. Well, one of the characters reminded me of Shirtless Bear Fighter. And the other characters were kind of a bit like, eh, could really give or, give or take, honestly. Um, but it was really, it was weird. I think of Kirkman's stuff, this is probably my least, like, favourite. I still really enjoyed it. I still enjoyed reading it. I read it all in one sitting. Um, but yeah, so... It deals with three brothers who are all assassins, and going into that, maybe that's why I was kind of shocked, because I thought it was just about one person. Um, but it deals with three identical twin brothers who are all raised to be assassins, and, well... And, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything, but um, it's really strange. If you're into, like, absolutely out there, gory violence, then this is the book for you. That's kind of what sold it to me. I quite enjoy, like, Preacher and stuff like that that's quite violent but um that's kind of more what i thought this would be and it is and then you get odd issues that are kind of a bit out there and that kind of took me out of it a little bit but um i enjoyed it for what it was there's a interesting sort of like mystery in the first few issues of like stolen identity that's all i'm gonna say and um yeah it shows really strange dynamic between three brothers so that is die 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 by Robert Kirkman and Scott M. Gim Gimple. Uh, yeah, interesting, interesting to say the least. So then I read before that, so I am doing this backwards, so before that I read Wolverine Old Man Logan. And if you remember my unboxing, you'll know that this was sent to me by SEC, Stone Cold Comics, who didn't have to send me this, but he did. And I absolutely love this story. It was a story I would have never read otherwise, but I absolutely love this story. It was incredible. So, so good. Uh, I hope a lot of people out there have read it, and if you have read it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, then do yourself a favour, check this book out. This is... Oh, I meant to say, for Die Die Die, it's probably like a mature audience. This is also from a mature audience. Um, yeah, I, uh, Mark Miller, who wrote Kick-Ass and wrote Wanted. Um, and I found out last night, also wrote a comic that the Kingsman film is based off, which I didn't realise. But yeah, it deals with um, 50 years in the future, Wolverine hasn't popped his adamantium claws out for, you know, 50 years because of something that happened, and now he's got to travel across country with a blind Hawkeye to deliver a package to someone. So it kind of deals with that, and it's a strange premise, but it it's really well done and I really enjoyed it. If you like the Logan film with Hugh Jackman, then you'll definitely definitely like this i think that kind of took a lot of inspiration for this but obviously you had to change some stuff like blind hawkeye and the spider buggy and the hulk mutants and everything like that there's some really really good fight scenes in this and if you've seen my top 10 fights video then you'll know what i'm talking about it's so yeah so so good um this is kind of the first wolverine book i've read as well so it was a really cool introduction to the character and a really cool kind of introduction to his philosophies and the way he is because I've seen all the films and I've read him in other stuff as well that he shows up in but never just a solo Wolverine centric book so it was interesting to see him struggle with the dynamic of being violent versus not being violent and then we get the flashback that's like everything that made him you know not want to be Wolverine anymore just want to be Logan and that's incredible like issue and yeah so that is Old Man Logan um there are some more in this series, and I would, I think I would like to keep reading it. I would like to read the second volume, but I know that Mark Miller didn't write them. I think it goes, I think Jeff Lemire wrote some of them, and maybe Bendis as well, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, if you've read them, then let me know down in the comments below. What did you think of them, and should I read them? Is that something you want to see in the unboxings? So yeah, Wolverine, Old, Old Man Logan. Um, reminded me of quite a bit of the Saint of Killers from Preacher, actually. Um, some of the stuff he goes through. But yeah, as I say, that's for probably a mature audience as well. Okay, and then the fourth story, we have The Fix by Nick Spencer. Um, this is, this is a weird one, because 
I was recommended this on Naming Condition by the Uncanny Omar. And Nick Spencer, another writer who I hadn't really read of before, I haven't read Secret Empire. That is what he did. I hope, yeah, I don't want to sound like I don't know what I'm talking about, but I haven't read Secret Empire. Um, I know some people really didn't like it, other people like his Captain America run. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this actually, to be honest with you. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. It follows these two cops that are crooked. Um, that's all I'm going to say. It follows these two cops that are crooked in Los Angeles. And it's weird and it's funny and the way it's written is great and it's definitely for a mature audience as well. It reminded me quite a lot of The Nice Guys, uh, the film with Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe. Yeah, it reminded me quite a lot of that actually. Although it's not set in like the adult film world, it's set sort of against the backdrop of drugs in Los Angeles I guess. Um, but I really really enjoyed it actually, like I, I wasn't really expecting too much from it. It is these three books and that's all that's out at the minute and what annoyed me was I got to the end of book three and it kind of ends on a cliffhanger and it's not finished and I don't know if it will be and I hope it will be because I'd love to read the ending. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it and the characters that are in this, the way they speak and the way they kind of interact, it's like a Tarantino film mixed with the nice guys. Um, so if you're a fan of either of those things, then you'll definitely enjoy this. There's like, the dialogue between some characters is really funny, it made me like laugh out loud. And um, some of the things that the characters do are <laughs> horrible and the way they treat other people is horrible. And then at the centre of it all you have this beagle that is just so cute and lovely. And um, it's a drug sniffing dog. And yeah, that's all I'm going to say, I don't really want to spoil anything. But I really enjoyed it, The Fix by Nick Spencer and Steve Lieber. And then finally, let's move on to a Mark Wade book, which I'd heard a lot of good things about. This is Irredeemable. This is the omnibus, um, the paperback omnibus. Now, I read this sort of over a week or two, and I don't really know what to think of it. I'm still processing it. This was the first book of the month I read, and then I went on to read the other stuff, like The Fix, um, Old Man Logan, and then so on so on um but i'm still trying to process this i'm still really trying to think what i thought of this this is again for a mature audience all five of these stories have been um this deals with what if superman essentially went evil one day like brightburn like i guess omni man i guess homelander to an extent and the plutonian is this version of superman and one day he just snaps and kills like millions and millions of people and there's some really cool bits in this like flashing between now and the past and you see things that like happened things that kind of made the plutonian the way he is and um yeah it's strange but i really enjoyed the first sort of half of the book and then after that it kind of i don't know it, it got very I d I'm trying to think of a way to describe it without sounding like I hate it, because I did enjoy it. It just got very, um... It went into a lot of detail about a lot of different stuff, and then, yeah, it kind of goes down a route that I wasn't really expecting, and... I don't know, there's a, there's, a, there's a couple moments in it where the story could have really ended, and then I was reading it and there's still, like, more than half of the book left. If you've read it, then you'll know the first fight with the demon and Cubit, you know. I'm not going to spoil anything, but if you have read it, you're, you know exactly what I'm talking about, I hope. Um, so yeah, it was strange. It was a good one. Maybe I'll reread it. It did kind of make me want to read Incorruptible, um, but not for a while maybe. Like I do want to read it at some point in the future, but I'm not eager to start reading it straight away. It kind of throws you in the deep end and expects you to catch up and like, it just talks about all these characters that have a pre-existing relationship and that's something that I do like, like I enjoyed that in Buzzkill. Uh, I spoke about that in my unboxing of that and the five recent reads and yeah but at times I think maybe because it was just like all over the place it was a little bit difficult to follow not all the time but like once or twice I kind of had to go back and be like oh okay now we're here this is going on this is happening okay okay um maybe that's just on my part maybe I'm just stupid <laughs> but that was that was everything I read this kind of month these last few weeks since I did the last video um, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing more of these videos. I really enjoy binge reading and just kind of reporting back on what I've read. Um, yeah, so we have Irredeemable by Mark Wade and Peter Krause. 
that is probably, like I say, a mature audience. Um, then we have The Fix by Nick Spencer and Steve Lieber, which is definitely a mature audience. Um, really good, really, really enjoyed it. And as I say, it reminded me a lot of the nice guys. Then Old Man Logan, which again, definitely for a mature audience, really good. Um, die, 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 again, a mature audience. Um, yeah, it was okay. Um, issue 3 comes out, maybe I'll wait on it a bit, maybe get it, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, it was a strange story that you just kind of have to close your mind off and just enjoy it for what it is and just kind of let yourself kind of fade into it and read it and just like not think too much about it. Um, and then finally, the one I, maybe other than Old Man Logan and The Fix, the one I maybe enjoyed the most, which was really surprising. I wasn't sure what to think to this, but I did enjoy it. I think maybe Old Man Logan I enjoyed the most, and then Vision, and then The Fix. Um, but yeah, that's Tom King's Vision. Um, did kind of make me want to read his Batman run and the City of Bane run, but I don't know. I've got a lot more stuff to read, so stay tuned for the next episode of 5 Recent Reads. I'll probably do it in the next few weeks-ish after I've read 5 more books, 5 more stories. I am currently moving house at the minute, so I've got probably going to do a video about moving my collection. Um, but yeah, and that was five recent reads. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did enjoy, please leave a like down below, consider subscribing, and leave me a comment. Uh, yeah, share the video with your friends as well. All that stuff that people ask for, it just helps grow the channel, and it helps me know that people are watching and enjoying my content. So, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Bye!